In today's video, we're going to be discussing GDP, stimulus, CPI, which is the consumer price index, asset bubbles, unemployment, minimum wage, green energy, the new green deal, uh, the reopening of the economy and tourism, negative interest rates, World Economic Forum, how that meeting went, and was I correct on my prediction, taxes, and of course, government. So I just want to start then with discussing the GDP. If you haven't watched my video, you'll see it on the channel there. It's one of the top videos in, under the investigations playlist, where I did an investigation into the GDP, not just of the United States, but I looked at the United Kingdom, I looked at Canada, Australia, and a few other countries. And I found this very interesting correlation between them all, which is that not only is the GDP manipulated and in double digits, for pretty much most countries um, in 2020, but they've also included stimulus, which was a new monetary creation put into the economy, and they counted that towards GDP. Yeah, massive scam. And then they used the spending that the consumers did with the GDP as well to count towards GDP. So we really are in a zombie economy. It doesn't matter where you are right now. The GDP is massively manipulated. And I believe it's actually double digits. I don't for a minute believe that uh, some of these economies only shrunk by two or three percent or some are saying they grew by three or four percent in 2020. I simply don't believe it unless it's China or, or somewhere where they are heavily manufacturing goods and services, then OK, that's a different story. But for most of the Western world where we have a net trade deficit, then I believe that the figures are manipulated. And I'll just come on to the CPI in a moment, which I, I mean, I'm, I'm staggered. I'm shocked at the, the number they came out with um, just just this week. But let's talk about the stimulus and what this is doing, because it does come into another point I'm going to talk about, which is asset prices just exploding. So the stimulus, again, we're going to be seeing more stimulus, more and more of this creation of, of money, of currency, as it's better known in different developing nations as well as developed nations like the West. And I know I've talked about this a lot, but I keep I have to keep going over it to make sure that people actually grasp this concept. But every time the government creates new money or currency, as it's more accurately reflected, every time they do this, it steals from the wealth already in existence. So let's use a simple example here. Let's just say and we'll use apples because it's very easy to use apples. Let's say that you have 100 apples in the apple supply and the value of each apple is 10 cents, right? This is the, the price they get sold for, 10 cents for an apple. Now, does that mean that if you then dumped more and more apples, let's use the US, for example, 25 to 30% more apples into the supply, what does that mean if there's only a demand for 100 apples? Well, it means that they wouldn't be worth 10 cents anymore. They would be worth less. Maybe let's just say they're now worth 7 cents. So now let's look at savings. So if you have money in a bank account, what happens when all this new money is created? The government tried to make out that you are richer. Everyone's getting richer. No, that's not true. Everyone is exactly the same. Unless you have savings, you're getting poorer. And you can check this out. You don't need to take my word for it. We know for a fact, and this was a government study, this is not an independent study, that the value of the US dollar dropped by somewhere in the region of 7% last year. Other independent studies put it at around 12%. Some put it as high as 14%. So just by having money in a bank account, you're actually losing money whilst all this new currency printing is going on. And it doesn't just steal from the middle class, it also steals from the poor as well. So everyone is affected by this new um, stimulus or this creation of new money. It is a very, very bad idea economically. Now, yes, it may be good in the short term to help people who are uh, struggling very heavily right now. So I obviously, of course, I'm not going to speak out against that and say people shouldn't be given stimulus checks. What I'm saying is this is a moral issue. It's an issue of ethics. But if we're talking purely on the fundamental mathematics and economics of it, it is a terrible idea because it creates a zombie economy and it only makes the crash 
even worse because we're now building up the money supply it's going to make the crash twice as bad as it would have been if we just let the economy self-correct and that's the beauty of our economy is that it is a self-correcting mechanism as soon as you start interfering in it you create a lot of problems now i want to tell you something really shocking i've got some statistics here this when i saw this yesterday just blew my mind so i hope you're ready for this i'm going to read out a lot of stats um, but but i'll get to the point at the end of it so this is the cpi which is the consumer price index so that's all sorts of items you know food items things like that as I've been reporting on, food and similar items have been exploding in price. You've noticed it as well in your basket at the supermarket. Everyone knows this is obvious. It's common sense. We're not stupid. Here's the government statistics then from the CPI. Are you ready for this? So in terms of cryptocurrency, Ethereum up 683% year on year. Bitcoin up 363%. Lumber up 115%. Soybeans up 59%, silver up 55%, copper up 46%, corn up 45%, cotton up 30%, coffee up 25%, the S&P 500 up 20%, gold up 17%, crude oil, one to watch for ladies and gents, up 16%. Wheat up 16%, US home prices up 10%, again, asset bubbles. However, are you ready for this? This is where it gets shocking. US consumer price index up 1.4% year on year. Just, just stop and think about that for a moment. All those figures I just gave you, all of this is calculated. And they're reporting that the CPI was up by 1.4% year on year. This is just pure manipulation. It makes me angry to even think about this. I have to laugh it off because it's so wrong, morally wrong to keep doing this. And you may ask, well, how do they report on that then? You know, th there must be something going on. Are they purely giving false numbers? Well, not exactly. You see what they do, and it took me a long time to figure this out. I figured it out a couple of years ago and nothing's really changed too much. Let's say, for example, you have a loaf of brown bread or wholemeal bread or something like that. And that might go up by 30 percent, let's say, over the last year for whatever reason, shortages and all sorts of things. So what they'll do is they'll then swap out that bread for another type of bread, something that maybe has reduced in price or hasn't gone up as much. White bread, for example, very, very cheap. And they do these swaps. And it's very hard to find this data, but if you look hard enough, you'll see that they are doing these swaps in the CPI. The other reason they don't want the CPI to go up is because of pensions and things like that. A lot of them are tracked, especially sort of government or, or um, pensions for older people. They are tracked to CPI. There's a lot of things that track the CPI. If that gets too high, then the outgoings, the bills for the government are going to increase as well. So there's a lot of things going on here that you're really just not seeing the truth of. If you're getting value from this video, could you do me a quick favour? Just click the like button below. Appreciate that so much. Thank you. I said I would touch upon asset bubbles as well. So asset bubbles, cryptocurrency, houses, the stock market, um, bond market, etc. We have these huge asset bubbles at the moment, and I'm going to be doing some more housing market videos very shortly. But what always doesn't make me annoyed, but it makes me laugh more than anything is the irony of it. When people say, Neil, you're, you're wrong. House prices have only dropped 0.9% from last month. Uh, and again, we're talking about the UK. But the UK printed <laughs> millions and millions, uh, sorry, billions, hundreds of billions of pounds last month. So therefore, in theory, asset prices like houses should have gone up by X percent, but instead they've dropped. So already we're seeing a decline in asset prices and, and prices such as houses just on the value of the currency, the euro, the British pound, Canadian dollar, American dollar, Australian dollar, whatever currency we're talking about, we're already seeing these drops in asset prices against a, a backdrop here of exploding asset prices. So we're having these two variables impact upon the prices at the same time. And this is why I keep saying we're going to see continued 
price rises, not value rises, but we're going to keep seeing these price rises in assets in direct correlation with how much stimulus and quantitative easing is created. And remember, quantitative easing is the inflation. A lot of people miss this all the time. And they say, oh, well, we haven't had inflation. No, we did. The quantitative easing, the QE, was the inflation, which is then supposed to be removed from the money supply. But it never is. You see, all this money goes into the finance world and they, the bankers and everyone, they take their cuts. By the time this money gets down to the people, it's worth a very small fraction of what it was worth when it got in at the top and all the financiers took their, their slither of it. So really what I'm saying is people are getting poorer and we're having this huge crisis brewing that simply the majority of people are still asleep. They simply cannot see the crisis that is brewing. Next, let's discuss the minimum wage then, which I took a lot of heat on last week's video for saying that we are probably going to see a $15 minimum wage by the end of 2021, um, especially in the United States. And the majority of people disagreed with it, and that's fine, as I always say, I like to see healthy uh, disagreement, but I just wanna to touch upon this point now, because just a couple of days ago, Nancy Pelosi has just come out and said that she is definitely going to push the $15 minimum wage through the House or through Congress. I can't remember what she said it was, but she's going to be pushing this very hard. She wants to see the $15 per hour minimum wage passing this year. Again, it's not that I have a crystal ball. I just I can see what the politicians want. I know the Democrats. I know the Republicans. I know the Conservative Party in the UK. I know the Labour Party. I, I'm not a political guy, but obviously I have to follow them to understand and read the history of what they voted on previously to actually know and understand and forecast what they might do in the future. So I, OK, maybe the $15 won't pass this year, but it is probably going to pass a year or two later. I don't think it's going to be a long time. And look, I've got nothing against the $15 minimum wage. I actually think people should be paid for their value in society. So let me give an example here. If you are a doctor or a nurse, obviously you should be extremely well paid because you've been to college, university, you've really put the time and effort in, you've invested money into your education, your qualifications. You deserve to be rewarded for that effort. Let's say then that you went to school and you dropped out and you just, you know, you didn't like school, you preferred to have fun, etc and you are sweeping up on a building site, right? So that's what you've been doing and they're paying you less than $15 per hour. Maybe they're paying you $10 per hour, for example. Well, that's because that's the value that they give your service. It's a $10 service for sweeping up and keeping something clean. Who is, let's say, sweeping up because they want $15 per hour because it's more fair. Again, this comes down to ethics. And really what I'm not talking about is the morality of it. I let other people debate that and discuss these points. But what I'm talking about is the economics and the mathematics of it. And I'm saying it, it simply doesn't work in a free market economy because those costs will just get passed on to the consumer. And then the consumer is going to have the, the difficulty. They're going to be paying more. It just doesn't really work this way. You have this this crazy society where the prices are just jumping back and forth because everyone's trying to manipulate and work around government uh, regulations. But I really think that the problem lies here somewhat with the media, with the advertisers who have created this consumption economy of junk. A lot of it really is junk. You need the latest pair of trainers or sneakers. You need this latest shirt. You need this, you need that. You need a dress for every time, for every day that you go out and then you get rid of that dress and buy a new dress, right? It's all of these sort of things, this culture that's been created that has, that, that has created this problem of the I deserve it economy. I deserve all these things. Well, not necessarily. You deserve what you earn and what you work for. And of course, again, we have moral issues here. And I and I'm actually you may be surprised, but I actually do stand behind a lot of the moral issues where certain people don't have the same opportunities as others. And I think we need to change that. Now, can you just change it like that overnight? No, you can't. It takes time. 
but I'm glad that we're seeing a lot of changes now which are helping uh, certain you know men versus women in terms of income equality and um, different races and and religions as well you wouldn't think it still exists in this day and age but it does having this greater equality so I actually am behind that I think it's a good thing that we're seeing seeing these things come about but what I don't agree with and I'll give you an a, a example again here was I was part of a very large organization and this organization was mainly men white men and older white men who were highly educated and they were running the organization very well but what the board decided was that we that there needed to be more diversity there needed to be women on the board even though that women hadn't really been in this field very for, for very long at all and also different races and all sorts of other things had to had to come into this and what actually happened and again i i completely am, am for this so don't get me wrong here but the problem is that it happened too quick. So probably 70, 80 percent of those men, the white men, retired from the board and that was it. They were gone. And all these new people came in with fresh ideas. They didn't have the experience. That's the problem here. And it just destroyed the organization. I mean, this is an organization that was going for a very long time and I'm not a part of it anymore because I can't be dealing with all the politics of it and this and that and all the nonsense. And they've really destroyed this community, which was just a fantastic community. So we do need to be careful about these things. Next point then is the reopening of the economy, especially European economies. And I've got a video coming out tomorrow, actually, where I'm going to be taking you on a tour around a tourist town one of the top tourist towns actually in the United Kingdom. I'm going to be taking you on a tour around that to show you my thoughts on it. But in essence, I don't believe the economy is going to be reopening for tourism anytime soon. Yes, we're going to have some domestic tourism, but international tourism, I'm not sure why the media keeps uh, doing all of this and saying we're going to have all this new international tourism. No, we're not. We're not going to have this in 2021. At the earliest right now, I would say spring of 2022 is when we're going to see tourism coming back. This means if you're in this sector, you might just want to plan and prepare for this. I personally can't see it coming back. Even if we have domestic tourism, how's that going to work? Um, how are all the passes going to work with COVID and vaccines and, um, you know, traveling between different areas and, and all this sort of stuff? I just can't see how it's how it's going to work. And of course, now there's all these mutations as well. So uh, a friend of mine's had his vaccine and now he's been told he needs to have two more vaccines for two different uh, strains and all this. I just can't see how this is going to get ironed out this year. Personally, I think it's going to be 2022 before we actually get a lot more uh, clarity around this situation. We've now seen as well negative interest rates passing in certain European countries. I know of three European countries now that have passed negative interest rates. I personally believe they're going to be coming to a lot more Western countries very soon. This means that if you have savings in the bank, not only are you going to be losing from all the new stimulus creation, but you're also going to be having to pay the bank every month for them looking after your money. And remember, even though it's your money, the bank considers it their own money. They consider it you giving them a loan. They're paying you interest on it. If they collapse, huh? Well, too bad um, bail-in law and, and everything else. So, again, just be very, very careful. I, just the last two, three weeks, I would say the majority of my mentoring calls, all the people like yourselves that I speak to, have been asking this exact same question. What do I do about all the money in my bank account? And it's very difficult because I'd love to just say to you, here, do this, this, this right now. But it's not quite that simple. It's individual for each person. I don't think I've given the same guidance twice to anyone. So it is a difficult situation. You need to start thinking about this now, start planning what you're going to do with your money. And um, remember, we have these huge asset bubbles. Another one that I've been uh, forecasting and, and studying recently was I was looking at the tulip mania that happened. If you don't know about the tulip mania, it went up like that, where one tulip bulb was worth you know, just a ridiculous amount. The most expensive piece of real estate was equivalent of one tulip bulb. And what actually happened was the, the next growing season, the free market kicked in and everyone started growing and it crashed the price of the tulips. Where am I seeing this right now? I'm seeing it in cryptocurrency. 
And, and let me be very clear. I love cryptocurrency. I'm heavily invested now into crypto and I'm going to continue to invest into crypto. However, let me add the caveat. We are in a season right now of this, the spike, the tulip spike. We have over more than 8,000 cryptos now. Some of these cryptos will go to zero. Mark my words, some of them will go to zero. At the same time, some of them will go to the moon. I just did an analysis and I've got it in my private community. If you're interested in looking at that, of my top picks, there's about a dozen in their top picks. My cryptos have done very well. I don't think I've lost on any. In fact, no, I haven't. I'll give you that as a fact. I haven't lost on any of my crypto picks throughout um, over the last few months. In fact, I've done very, very well from them. But I am warning all of my community to be careful because I am concerned. I do think that we are going to see a crash in certain cryptocurrencies. So that's another warning to be aware of. OK, next, I'm just going to tie in the Green Energy New Deal with the World Economic Forum. They had their meeting in Davos, just as I talked about. I made the video The Great Reset Explained. One of the first people to make a big video on it. The video's got 800,000 views. Oh, guess what? It gets uh, it gets banned. Now, what did I say in that video as my summary? After doing a lot of research, months of research, I said, I think the reason all of these institutions, which financial institutions, are meeting in Davos is not to discuss green energy. I think they're meeting to discuss new currencies. And if you saw last week, it, well, if you didn't see, definitely check it out on their website. What did they discuss near the end of the conference, spend a couple of days? It was crypto or digital currencies. Just as I forecast they would, even though they made no mention of it anywhere at all. It was all about green energy. And yet they spent a couple of days discussing digital currencies. And again, some people think maybe Neil's very smug every time he gets these things right. And he forecasts the housing market drop in in the UK in December, January. And it did happen. I, I have to tell you, I take no pleasure in being right on these things. Because every time I'm right, it means that you are losing. So I, I don't take any joy or, or enjoyment out of these forecasts and them being so accurate. And I just want to say that on record. I would much prefer that I'm wrong all the time on these things. Because that means that we as a community are winning. But at the moment, we're having more losses than we are wins. And I don't believe it's over yet. I think this is just the beginning. I think this is probably the end of the beginning. But now we're going to move into phase two which is going to be a very, very bad situation. And then finally moving into the end of all of this, which may take three or four years yet. And that's when it's going to be a really, really bad situation. I'm actually in production of a video series right now. It's going to be a very, very big video series. Uh, you've heard me talk about it for months already. If you thought the Great Depression series, that three part series was detailed, this next one's probably going to be about a dozen episodes, which is why it's taking so long. I'm also going to have some cryptocurrency videos, some beginner's guides coming out soon just to help you get started. So you're not missing out on these huge gains that I mean, I've seen three, four hundred percent gain in some of my cryptos that I bought just in the last month or two. You just can't get that anywhere else right now. And finally, I'm just going to talk very briefly about taxes. A lot of people are asking me what I think is going to happen in taxes. I think it's pretty obvious that um, especially in the in the USA, the UK, a couple of other countries, they need to pay for this, all of this, this new stimulus, even though they create it out of thin air, they're going to say it needs to be paid back. Of course it does. We live in a debt based economy. The only way to grow the GDP is through debt. People always argue with me against that, but that is the truth. The only way to grow the GDP now is through debt. The more debt you create, the faster the GDP grows and everyone's in a race is who's got the biggest ego, which country to get the biggest GDP It's the wrong metric to use. But a side point anyway, I think taxes are going to go up for the wealthier people, but not just the wealthy people. I think across the board, a lot of people are going to be hit with this. And here's a little trick that the government will do. Are you ready for this? They'll say, OK, we're only going to tax people over this amount. And you say, oh, well, I earn under that. So that's great for me. Yes, it's great right now. But then as your wages increase in the future, not is they're not going to increase anytime soon. What's then going to happen is you're going to go into that tax bracket. 
even though, remember, this money was created in the first place. So you've gained nothing. In fact, you've lost because you're now paying more tax, even though you're just earning what you would have earned anyway. So I hope the video helped today. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Do me a quick favour, just click that like button for me. Um, maybe share the video with a friend, someone you think needs to see this warning. Uh, but apart from that, uh, God bless, take care, and I'll see you all very shortly.